Hey guys, Ibra here with Hard Reckon X and welcome to our 2018 Computex coverage here at Taipei. Our first stop was at an ASUS meeting because they officially unveiled the ROG smartphone. Yes, we are looking at a smartphone designed by the Republic of Gamers or under the Republic of Gamers by ASUS. And this brings up a lot of questions because for one, you know, the smartphone market is pretty saturated in 2018 and the point of launching a smartphone designed for gaming uh, is definitely interesting. I'd love to see where ASUS is taking this direction to and of course uh, we'll see what their outcome is uh, at the end of the year because you know we've seen companies like Razer come out with the Razer phone which was it sort of sparked the whole uh, gaming centric smartphone uh, last year and now we have ASUS with the ROG phone. But before we get into that huge shout out to Fantex, Thermaltake and Cooler Master for sponsoring our Computex 2018 coverage. Okay so why a gaming smartphone? Well the ROG phone is actually targeted towards a niche market, someone who's looking for a specific feature of that gaming device, someone who finds a certain feature impressive or attractive that they just, you know, appreciate. So I don't think this is going to perform or it's going to beat the flagship smartphones that are currently in the market in 2018. Uh, but like I said, it is, it comes with some exclusive features. I think Asus is just shoving a bunch of features at your face with the ROG phone and I think uh, some of the cool features of this phone are pretty interesting, so let's dive into it. From a design standpoint, well, expect aggressive gamer-centric elements given that this is an ROG device. I mean, take a look at the back. Clearly, this does not look like your typical average flagship smartphone. There's Gorilla Glass back that's a fingerprint magnet and super slippery, but the main frame is constructed out of metal. Uh, you also get these super cool aggressive design elements uh, at the back as well. The fingerprint reader is located at the back. It is fairly easier to reach, but it's designed in an odd way. Uh, it really prefaces form over function. And of course, we all saw this coming, the implementation of RGB lighting. Yes, this is the last thing that we all wanted in a smartphone. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, this is not what we wanted. But hey, uh, if you are someone who wanted RGB lighting on a smartphone, I guess the ROG S phone is probably something that you want to look into because that lighting, the back supports aura and you can go through certain effects like, uh, um, you know, rainbow, color static, uh, strobing effects and whatever you need to and you can customize that through the app center that's built into Android. Now considering that the RGB logo is a showcase piece, I think 99% of the time you would be covering that with your hands so it really wouldn't make any sense uh, if you want to showcase that RGB goodness when you're outside walking down the streets or if you're in a, uh, you know, Lola situation where you just want to showcase your phone that comes with this flashy RGB lighting. So uh, that is something to keep in mind but again, if you are someone who's, again, looking for RGB lighting on a smartphone, I guess this is it. The ROG phone comes with front-facing speakers and they have decided to not eliminate the headphone jack, so kudos to ASUS for that. Now getting into the specs, uh, this thing comes with a Snapdragon 845 processor with a sustained clock speed of 2.96 gigahertz and they've been able to achieve that through an advanced vapor chamber design uh, with a copper heat spreader and uh, the carbon cooling pads within the chassis. Pretty impressive and the idea behind this was to deliver the best possible cooling to achieve the highest sustained CPU and GPU frequencies. It comes with 8GB of RAM, 128GB or 512GB of onboard storage. Remember, 512GB of onboard storage on a smartphone is just insane. I don't think an iPhone 10 can go as far as 512GB. So ASUS is really stepping things or they're de definitely taking things to another level. Another impressive feature of the ROG phone is the battery capacity. So it comes with a 4000 mAh battery with support for ASUS hypercharge quick charging that can be done through the side custom USB-C ports. Speaking of which, is an interesting addition to the ROG phone. You see, normally we're used to seeing a single USB Type-C port on a device uh, and sometimes you, know, you might end up using that Type-C device to adapt a 3.5mm headphone jack uh, with smartphones that don't come with one. With the ROG phone, you're getting three of them. So the two custom USB Type-C ports, you also get your headphone jack and of course a single uh, Type-C port at the bottom for charging the device. So ASUS has designed this to work with different accessories that ROG has also launched alongside the smartphone. For example, this Aeroactive Cooler is a detachable fan equipped cooler that clips onto the phone and is powered by these side USB ports. The fan can be controlled via the ASUS Game Center app and it also happens to come with RGB lighting and just so you know, this is included with the device. The mobile desktop dock is pretty straightforward. Basically, it allows you to connect external displays up to 4K resolution and the phone can be used as an auxiliary display. So you can have your gameplay on the main display and perhaps the mobile display uh, to view stats or other things like that, which is pretty cool. I should also mention that you can plug in other peripherals like a mouse, keyboard, ethernet and check this out. They've also included a full-size SD card reader. 
That's pretty amazing. Next up, we have the Game Vice controller, and it actually makes the whole setup look like a portable console. It comes with integrated physical buttons and triggers for an enhanced gaming experience. There is an integrated magnet for easier storage. It feels pretty good in the hand, but a little flimsy because it doesn't come with proper grip support. ASUS has also included a YG dock that allows transportation of display signal via the 802.11 AD wireless protocol to a TV or monitor. The last accessory to cover here is the Twin View Dock. Consider this as a Nintendo DS or a dual screen mobile gaming device. It sports a 6 inch AMOLED display that looks identical to the ROG phone, but it's built into the unit. It also has a 6000 mAh battery, so when you dock the ROG phone that features a 4000 mAh battery, you're looking at a 10,000 mAh monster of a portable gaming console. Given that this is a handheld device, ASUS has implemented two trigger buttons as well as enhanced cooling solution to cool this monster. Now just so you're aware, all these accessories are being sold separately from the ROG phone with the exception of the Aero Active Cooler, the little clip attachment that goes with the cooler that provides active cooling for the device. Uh, and ASUS hasn't given any confirmation in terms of pricing for both the accessories and the ROG phone as of right now, but they are expecting it to launch sometime between July and September of this year. So, and they are, and they've told us that the pricing would be, of the, of the device would be right on par with some of the Android flagship smartphones of 2018. My guess would be somewhere in the marks of like, I don't know, $899 or something around that price point. Uh, if it's even lower than that, great, because you're looking at an absolute spec monster of a device uh, from ASUS. But yeah, I'm curious to see what this thing would cost. Coming back to the ROG phone, I just want to go over something pretty interesting in terms of the gaming features that they've integrated within the device. You see, the lack of physical gaming buttons is often thought as a limitation for smartphone gaming. ASUS took another approach here by engineering the ROG phone for landscape mode gaming. They've added something called air triggers, which are ultrasonic touch sensors that act as left and right triggers at the top of the display when gaming in landscape mode. There's another one which can be used in portrait mode as well, and I think this is pretty awesome. The air triggers are fully programmable for any on-screen action, and since they are engaged by your index fingers, your thumbs will be freed up for other things. Think of this as virtual buttons over your typical tactile ones that come with a controller. It would certainly take a while to get used to, but I'd love to test it out if I get the opportunity to review one sometime this year. Now, considering that the ROG phone is a smartphone, you should expect some sort of camera implementation. So what they've done is implement a 12 megapixel and an eight megapixel dual camera system at the back. Uh, and of course, I guess this is expected because it's 2018, you gotta have two cameras. So. Uh, it is interesting. I'm not exactly sure what type of sensor they're using, uh, but uh, of course, I'm not. My, I'm going to keep my expectations pretty low because ASUS hasn't been quite up there in terms of smartphone quality uh, or smartphone camera quality. So yeah, if I get my hands on with this device, I'll definitely make sure to test out the camera. Now, a few things that you may be a little disappointed is, of course, the lack of support for wireless charging and uh, water resistant rating like IP67 or IP68. It has some sort of resistance, but it doesn't feature or doesn't have that IP68 standard. Uh, just like what you find with other smartphones like you know the Pixel 2. So that's something to keep in mind. It could be a deal breaker for some of you out there. But you know what? Overall, I think you know the ROG phone is an interesting device. I, again, like I said in the beginning of this video, ASUS has just jam-packed a bunch of features on this device. It is a flagship or it's a spec monster. I mean, you've got eight gigabytes of RAM, uh, a Snapdragon 845 processor that can be sustained at higher frequencies. It's probably the world's fastest uh, chipset on a device and it's got a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, which is insane considering, you know, the, the size of the device. So uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the ROG phone. What do you guys think about it? Of course, the different accessories that come along with it. Uh, are you a fan of the RGB lighting implementation? Is it something that you expected this year in 2018? Again, love to hear your thoughts in the comments. I'm Ibar with Hardware Connects. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more Computex coverage here in Taipei, and we'll see you in the next one.